All right, so if you're curious on how to install wheel controls in your 9802 F body, this should be the video to help you out a little bit. First, I'm gonna go over the few things that I use to get the swap done. You're gonna need a steering column or a steering wheel with the controls and a clock spring out of the out of the uh, car that had the controls in it. I just got a good deal on a whole column with the wheel, so I decided to just use that instead as I don't have to fish that clock spring all the way down the column, which is kind of a pain in the ass to do. But anyways, what you will need is a clock spring from a car that had the control module on it, so you can fish it down the column. The wheel with the wheel controls, you will need a uh, pack adapter if you have a doubled in head unit. If you have a factory head unit, you'll just need to repin one of the pins on the harness. And a little bit of knowledge on how to extend harnesses and use crimps and taps and all that stuff. Now you want to have the column in there, you can either get this pigtail off of a junkyard car that had it on the radio harness, or you can just directly cut and splice the wires into the, or tap them into the harness on the radio as you need to. However, the wiring is a little bit different if you use this pigtail versus just regularly cutting and splicing wire to wire. So I'm going to go ahead and post a picture up here. This is from LS1 Tech off of one of the guys who did it, and I used this to actually help me get mine done but it shows the pin list on here and it shows you which wire to tap into on the radio harness. Now the part I had problems with the most was the pack adapter and that was solely because I did not look at any of the instructions. I just thought I could do it myself and yeah, I was wrong. So you have this headphone jack looking piece that comes with the kit. That piece you wanna plug into each other, kinda of just make it loop around a little bit. You have a brown wire coming off of there that's going to be crucial. You're going to need to take that one and based off of whatever head unit you have on this list right here, follow the instructions. I had a JVC unit, which is also a Kenwood, and mine was the blue and yellow wire, which was also conveniently labeled steering wheel controls. I had to either solder or use a butt connector on the brown wire to that steering wheel control wire to get that one to work. I then took pin number 6 and pin number 12 off of the pack adapter harness, which is your power and ground and I tapped them into the radio harness's power and ground to give this adapter power. So you have a power ground and then you have your radio input signal for which is the blue and yellow wire in my case. Now after you get it all wired up you should see it start flashing some colors on the little black box. As long as it does that you know it's working right. The next step is to program it. The programming can be a little finicky. I had a few issues with it until I finally got it to work. You also want to make sure that if your steering wheel controls aren't lighting up or they're not pairing, make sure they're plugged in to the actual connectors and the wheel itself. Mine weren't and that's why mine wouldn't actually pair to the device. I'm going to go ahead and toss some pictures up there to hopefully help you guys out if you run into any issues. Just keep in mind this wasn't the finished product so all of the exposed wiring and the non heat shrunk connectors you see, they were all probably done after the video was shot. Now when it comes to programming your adapter, what I did was I took a pin and pushed down the hole inside there until the light started flashing red and green. Once it did that, I went to the steering wheel controls, held the volume up button down until it stopped flashing, and then for me, everything is programmed. However, the programs aren't exact. I think there are some issues with the uh, lower four buttons, except for the mute one. They're just not the exact. However, you are allowed to remap any button you want to anything on there. You just got to go to the website and figure out what the actual pattern is to install it. It takes a little bit of time, but if we really want to do it that way, then that'll work. And lastly, if you wanted to use this on a stock head unit, I believe you would just need to take the power signal wire off of here and plug that into what would be pin 14 on your factory radio harness. And that should allow you to use the wheel controls on a factory head unit. Overall, it wasn't a bad project at all. The issues I ran into were really simple and it's because I wasn't paying attention, but I made this video to hopefully help out those of you who are gonna try to tackle this project on your own. Um, if you have any questions, just let me know and I'll try my best to get back to them.